Jesus Christ, Amen. Uh, my topic is to love, is to worship. I will be reading John chapter 4, and then I will start at 23. Then Jesus replied, and he said, Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is for the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And we're going to read our 28 fundamental belief, but I'm going to start at uh, fundamental belief number four, the sun. Uh, it reads as follows. God the eternal Son became incarnate in Jesus Christ. Through him all things were created. The character of God is revealed. The salvation of humanity is accomplished. And the world is judged. Forever truly God, he, he became also truly human. Jesus the Christ. I will end here. Uh, now, you need to understand that when John writes, he writes from a Christological perspective point of view. But now I'm going to use what we call a dialectical approach. A dialectical approach is when I will look at an eagle view of the book of John up until I will land at the book, or, or, up until I will land at chapter 4. Now, when Jesus speaks, he says, the time has come. He's talking about the present 
and yet he's referring to the eschatological understanding of worship. Now you need to understand that when Jesus speaks, he is speaking from a, the from a theo and Christological perspective. He understands who he is and then he speaks about what is to come. Now uh, you need to know that there is a different when it comes to worship. The Jews and the Samaritan, they understand that when you worship, location matters more. When you worship at a different location, they believe that your prayers and your worship will be heard now and at that particular time. But Jesus calls for believers that worship the Father in truth and in spirit because of the Father is in because of the Father is spirit. Now, 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 when one other writer who's called uh, Martin Luther Jr., he says, God felt useless being God. Now, in uttering that statement, he, 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 he speaks based on a God who knows that being on the throne and being almighty does not work. You need to come down and serve the people. Now, coming down, which is the kenosis of the Father. Now, the kenosis of the Father is when the Father deduces himself. Now, when the Father deduces himself, it means the Son also has to deduce himself. And the Holy Spirit also has to deduce themselves. Now, in them deducing themselves, it means they become incarnate. Now, they, 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 they become what is known as the kenosis. Now, the kenosis is the emptiness of the Father, or the emptiness of the Son, or the emptiness of the Holy Spirit. Now, uh, one of my favorite writers says, God, God's possibility of becoming is a priori revelation of being. Christian theology finds its premises on the becoming of God in Jesus Christ. That is, Jesus Christ is the utter, it, Jesus Christ is the uttermost possibility of God's becoming. Thus, in the becoming, Thus, in the becoming of God, God is constantly beside himself, with himself, for himself. Jesus is the self-deduction of God, existing towards God himself, with God himself, for God is in himself. The understanding of being that is God is everywhere and, and God is anywhere, opens the possibility of himself. Hence, the deduction of himself in Jesus Christ is a possibility of God. In, it is in the aspect of being is suffic sufficiently defined. The being is God with himself, and in himself. So what does that mean? Now, now Jürgen Moltmann, he says, uh, the relationship of worship, it is the inward relationship and the outward relationship. Now, the outward relationship of a triune affects the outward relationship. What does this mean? This means that the salvation of the cross is an economical salvation. And that on its own is an outward relationship of God. Now, when the cross is accomplished, it means that the inward relationship is affected. The, 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 the inward relationship had when the son is at the cross. But the outward relationship benefits the humanity. So what does this mean? It means that now because of we are saved by God, 
who is the eternal son, Jesus Christ. It means that now we are part of a triune circle. It is, it is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Now, because of the Son has become one of us, he, has, he, he is in human form and he represents humanity and also he represents the Godhead. Now, because it's like that, when God now looks at humanity, he does no longer see humanity, but he sees Jesus who represents humanity. Now, in the triune circle, it means that now we are part of the triune. And then now being part of the triune calls to worship. When we worship among ourselves, we are in one accord, like the triune are in one accord. When we love each other, we worship because of love is to worship. Worship call to forsaking oneself. And now one of the missiology class says, um, God is hidden. And then now when the concept of God is hidden, one would say, yes, God is hidden. Why is God hidden? Because of the church, which is the body, does not represent the body of the church. So Christ himself can only be understood and we can only be in the triune circle when we are inside the body of Christ and representing the gospel. And the gospel calls for worship. Now, when we are worshiping and when we are in a triune circle, now the gospel itself now, it is incarnated and we represent the gospel and we call people to worship, to worship in the church inside the body of Christ and now the gospel is clear. Now what am I saying? I'm saying to you that when we are called for worship, we are called to be part of a triune circle. Not only part of the triune circle, but we are called to be part of the body of Jesus. And when we are part of the body of Jesus, we can distribute the gospel. People can come and believe that now this church worship God because of we feed the poor, we feed the nation, we speak about the love of God, we teach people what is to love one another, we teach people how to worship God. We are representing the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is the incarnation of God. Now, with that being said, I want to say that the call to worship is to call, it calls one to forsake oneself. With this word, I would like to say, may God be with you and God bless you until we meet again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.